Well, I want to welcome everyone to the Rockland Board of Sewer Commissioners meeting, uh, working session, in-person working session uh, for the commissioners only. Uh, the public is welcome to attend, but there'll be no public comment input at these section sessions. We will take questions to be answered at the next session. Uh, this is being recorded by WRPS to be played back later. With that, I'll take a motion to open the meeting. Motion to open the meeting. So there's a second? Second. Mr. DeRoss, are you vote? Yes. Ms. Valley? Yes. And Mr. Hessians, a yes, unanimous. Uh, do you want to discuss the work, the minutes of the working minutes, the meetings of the minutes of the working sessions? I'm going to skip that out. Well, I found them acceptable. Well, I know that's what I'm saying. Do we have them? I found them right. Okay, do I have a motion to accept those minutes? Make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Mr. DeRoss, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Valley? Yes. And Mr. Hessians, a yes, unanimous. And you'll get those two. Um, Robin. Robin. Yes. And I owe you three things that we talked about at that, the, at the executive session. Correct. Okay, then I will get those two tonight. Uh, next on the agenda is the superintendent's position update and project manager's discussion. Uh, I sent you to, 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 to date, we have received seven resumes. Uh, for confidentiality, I numbered them one through seven. Dan, you got those? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's for the outside job or the inside this job? This is for the superintendent's position. Yes. And what I'd like to do is, is, one, have you had a chance to go through them, I hope? I have. Have you? I, uh, I've gone through them quickly, and uh, I think some of them shouldn't even have been there. Okay. I'll tell you what, out of the seven that we have that we look at right now, uh, you have them numbered? I do. Um, oh, good. Do you feel like um, we want to talk to candidate number one? Yes. You do? Yes. Which we see from Brockton? Uh, he's from Boston. Yes. Okay. Candidate number two. John, I don't want to mention the name. I think we should talk to him as well. I agree with him. Candidate number three. Uh, I was, I don't think that. No. Yeah. Reason being, there, there's no applicable uh, evidence in his work history of having been exposed to anything like this. Number three. Okay, number th four and number five, I would say no. If you want to talk to him, you know, I'm, this is not a one man board, mm -hmm. um, one person board. May I just No problem. Oh, jeez. Obviously, family. Um, right. Jimmy, can I call you back? I was thinking perhaps number five. Yes, how are you? Can I call you back? Just to provide a. a hey, did you buy the truck? Where is it? Number four, I don't think is. Well, I looked at the, just the thing? way he wrote the, the application, the errors on that. I don't think he's qualified. Oh, jeez, what happened to him? I'll call you back in about that one. Okay, I'm gonna meet. You know my concern on this one. Okay, if I want to talk to him. Okay, okay, be good. Okay. Candidate number six. Uh, my feeling is um, no, no real background. Not to not have the necessary background. Candidate seven was interested. Interesting to me. Only from project management point of view. Um, she said she's a writer, wasn't she? Could write a proposal. Yeah, but I mean that's this one I was looking at. I mean, mm -hmm. do we throw that in the mix just for to see what we could, or do you want to say maybe later? I'm thinking maybe later. Mm -hmm. um, 
perhaps after we see how it goes with Viola. Okay. Um, so we have three we may want to talk to. We definitely want to talk to. Mm -hmm. So what I would ask you to do, say we'll give them a week's notice. Today is the 17th. Uh, why don't we see if we can get them, uh, reach out to Stacy tomorrow. Friday's a holiday. She can get them. Friday's a holiday? Uh, for, on Friday, they close the town hall. Town hall. Now, that would give us um, the week of August 29th, which leads into Labor Day. Or we could see if we can get them to come in on September 6th, 7th, or 8th. Sooner the better. Okay, I'm going to let you guys think it over and tell me tonight. And then I'll notify, you know, check your schedules. So we're either looking at the week of the 29th of August or the week of the 5th of August, which is Labor Day. Let me know tonight. I'll reach out to Stacy tomorrow and see if she can schedule them. My son's getting married or Labor Day. Huh? My son's getting married. Okay, but that, what, when are you going to be? Over Labor Day. So when will you be leaving? You're going to be... I wish I wasn't leaving, but... Okay, no, but okay. What I need to know, what I need to do, is look at the week of the. You know, I'm just leaving like a, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Look at those oh. two weeks and let me know. Yeah. Um, the both weeks, what days you're available, and then I'll have Stacy reach out to them and find out their availability. What I'd like to do is do them in one night. It has to be done in open session. We can do that at night. We could do that any, and I, what I would do it, I would do it at night because all three of these people are working. Most likely, yeah. So yeah, what we could do is we could say, if they could come in and say, if you we did it at 6.30. Do it only or do it right here. I would probably see if we could do it up at uh, WYPS so it could be broadcasted. It could be broadcast. So I will reach out to Stacy tonight, uh, tomorrow morning, I forget from you guys tonight. Uh, project manager. I have a phone call, a group call, phone call with the all your reps um, at 3.30 today. Um, you saw the email I sent to the new player now. It's got, now handed up. We've gone from, with Violia, so people know we've gone from John Mongey, Mike Marson, to Mike Burke. And this John Oatley from Viola is the vice president. Now they have a separate division. Uh, where they got, I think where the screw up came up and the delay came up was the transition from Suez to Veolia. Um, both Mike Burke, I believe, and um, uh, John Marson were Suez employees being over. But Veolia has a division uh, that handles collection systems, solely collection systems. Um, now, the two things we talked on and what we're looking at is, it, and you saw the email, I'm looking for a six months project manager. Uh, even if we bring in someone new, do they get their feet acclimated? I think it still may be a good way for us to get a good handle on everything that's going around because there's, there's too many irons in the fire right now. Uh, so I'll read this into the record. I said, um, I talked to a gentleman, John Oakley. It was, I said it was nice talking to you. hope you can finally get the board of commissioners get to help them get this going. Uh, what I'd like to do is handle this as a task or an add-on right now to our current contract for a project manager to help oversee the facility activities through some short-term projects as well as the EPA order oversight. Let's start with a 15, 20 hour a week period for six months and like everything else cost plays into this so let's be as creative as possible. Right now we're paying an interim superintendent who's stressed pretty thin because he's also the highway superintendent. Um, there will be no field work involved, but I would require this person to attend our once a month meeting for approximately a half hour and provide bi-monthly updates to the commissioners. Uh, I had asked for a ongoing list of tasks from Dave. I put down what I knew. He now has a full list of tasks that are out there. And I listed those. So those are just the ones that he would oversee and coordinate questions from the engineers to the apl applicable parties. Um, the other thing I said I would also like to, another task would be to work with Rick 
to make sure markouts, breach traps, and site inspections get done. We may need to hire another body to Rick part time or pay someone overtime. Uh, right now, they are currently doing uh, markouts. They did. I talked to Rick. He said they're doing 40 a week. I don't know where all these projects are in Rockland. My assumption was all markouts were done by Dig Safe, and some were done um, by Rockland. But I want to make sure the markouts were doing a sewer related only, so we're not wasting manpower or money. Um, if we're doing all of them, I, I'd like to see if highways also throwing in a body and water as well. So we'll ask Dave on that tonight. Um, and again, I'm with this project manager. Long term, if it works out, I'd have this project manager work with Rick and the superintendent to develop short and long term capital needs and figure out what a long term management solution would be, whether or not we need a full time um, superintendent or do we just contract outright to Violia? Uh, which leads me back into the hire of a new superintendent. I would say we go a one year trial contract. Uh, if we bring him in under the other way, it would, so he's a Rockland employee, and we get dual responsibilities who reports to who mm -hmm. in conflicts. Mm -hmm. So I say we work, and again, that's something you guys can think about. We don't have to vote on that, but think of it uh, or, or I mean, do anything every tonight. Job, every job has a trial period. Right. Some six months, some a year. Right. What I would do with this position is that by the time we make an understanding or if we're going to make an offer to a person, we should know what we're going to do with this project manager for Veolia. Mm -hmm. I would assume we will know uh, in a span of a week or two mm -hmm. what the, pro pro the process of this, con this conversation this afternoon is. They wanted the scope of work and I said, okay, let's cut right through the chase. Let's prepare the scope of work tonight. See what you want in the scope. I'll write it, present it to you two. Mm -hmm. And if we have to call, we vote on it our next working session. Get the person in here, talk to them, and mm -hmm. get off and over. So, now, the reason I'm saying added as a, a task, we have a current contract with Veolia. If we add it on as a task, it's just an add-on to that contract. Mm -hmm. No matter what we do, and to keep it kosher, uh, it would all be run by legal anyway to make sure everything is 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 is, is appropriate yeah. and above board. So I, re I really think this project manager gut feeling is the way to go right now. So and I think my thoughts on the project manager and is that they would create kind of an overall department plan that would loop in and corral all these various product uh, projects, prioritize idea. them, you know, how do they impact each other, how do they impact our EPA. Or exactly. Them. And I would also like to see them develop for each of the projects, and this is within a project manager's scope, um, milestones for each project. Oh, I agree. And I, and I, maybe we have that, but I don't know where it is, and I think this would, um, make it more transparent so that we're all on the same page. Okay, I can send this off to John to look at too before we have our conversation so they have it. And it's strictly straight up project management. So right, but like I said, I'd like to keep it to, to 15, 20 hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it on that item? Yep. <clears throat> EPA order. Uh, I want to make sure I have this over, this over, this over. Oh, one thing we should do with the letter of Dave. I'm going to jump back a minute. For the, we had to want to sign a letter with Dave. Um, I sent that out to you. What I would like to add on is what we discussed about a detailed log sheet. Mm -hmm. And if he's going to use Suez personnel, Viola personnel for markouts and grease traps, I want to know how many hours he's using them. So we'll add on to the letter and I'll sign it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. He just showed um, up. He just showed up. Yeah, he just showed up. Yeah, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. EPA. Okay. 
I think we've lost the, the, the direction somehow. You saw the notice from John Clifford that we're not required to have bids or contractors in place that so we didn't need an extension. I had sent them in what I thought was a, back in April to give them a summary. I, April meeting, we started in on this. Uh, we had asked the superintendent if, if ACOM would be interesting to bid. He didn't feel they would be. Um, and that is going after the 67,500 gallons of I and I. He didn't feel they would be, so we asked him to go out and get five bids. Came back in May, he confirmed they weren't interested. We asked him for the five bids and specifically asked if he could write the scope of work. Correct me if I'm wrong. Am I wrong? No, you're correct. Yeah. Okay, uh, that was in May. Now, I received a lot of pressure from uh, the Board of Selectmen, the Chairman of the Board, and Town Council to let the department heads do their job. So I did not interrupt with that. Come to July meeting, we were given a quote on July 20th from AECOM for $40,000. We had drawings to do the I&I &I work. I didn't think that was a plan that would be sufficient for the EPA where we had specifically mentioned the 67,000. So I prepared a scope of work, sent it in and say, ask them in an email if it wasn't sufficient would they grant us an extension. I was chastised for that. Everything I was told has to go through town council where it is the, the a town order. Uh, we were not required to have bids or contractors in place. We did not need an extension. The plan needed to generally describe how you intended to accomplish I and I removal for the 67,000. Uh, with the assistance of Dave Taylor and Doug Lapp, I was able to pull together the attached submission. What should have been a fairly straightforward task was made immeasurably more difficult because no one contacted attorney Kenny or myself for guidance. Um, again, I gave hands off. If it was so cut and dried, I don't know why that thing wasn't written. Mm -hmm. Do you? Or? I, I think, yeah, we, we expected that Dave was gonna write it. It didn't get done. Okay. Moving so forward. We well, we're moving forward now for that. They have submitted September a... September 1st day. Huh? We have September 1st Okay, well, let's get through this. We've got to get through this. Now, they okay. submitted, as far as I know, the EPA had once sent back a plan. We'll make this public tonight on the uh, what they have received. The question I have is right on the first one. We've received a proposal to prepare rehab design plans, specifications, and moving on ice sources in manholes and locations identified. Part of the proposal will include office services during the construction phase. My understanding this is what's up to bid for the five bids. So we need to get that in-house ASAP because they've said construction plans will go out no later than October 14th. So that's, Dave's got to make that work. I'm not going to jump in. Okay. So what I'd like to know from Dave is, has he identified the five companies that are going to do this? Okay, that's what you got to ask him tonight. Because okay. it's on the agenda for tonight. I'll let you bring that up, so it's our confrontation. Okay. So it looks like we've met item one. Item two is um, submit an updated scope of services for the CWMP to include studies to identify sources not addressed in the SSES study. Identify opportunities for inline storage during peak flows, identify offline storage peak flows, and identify opportunities for in-ground ejection. Identify opportunities for offline storage during peak flows, and additional connection restrictions beyond those in the 2021 moratorium. That, all that has to be included in that scope of work. Now last Friday, well, Dave and myself- CWMP scope. Right. Okay. Last Friday, Dave and I met with um, Wright PS via Zoom call, uh, and we had members of the EW, uh, EPA with us. Uh, we went over the concerns with EPA and SDP. Uh, Wright PS says they have a handle on what's needed. I put a call into Kevin Olson of Wright PS yesterday. It was his wife's 60th birthday. He's going to get back to me tonight or tomorrow morning to Dave and I. Can he meet that deadline, which he doesn't think is going to be a problem. So what he's got to do, he's got to get that updated scope to us. 
The board has to review it. Yeah. Once we agree to it, ship it off to um, Clifford and Kenny yeah. for approval and Doug Lapp to say, yep, they've seen it, and get it into the EPA. So we need it by the end of this week. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But again, this is all known. So that's the next deadline. Again, that superintendent knew that. So that we need an update on tonight on where we stand with that from him. Does he recognize those dates? Can he meet those dates? It's not a question of can he meet those dates. No, it's a matter of has to. He has to meet them. We need that addendum by the end of the week. Yeah, well, I can call them tonight, but I, right now I don't think that's appropriate. I'll give them a call to get yeah, them, no, keep them no. motivated tonight. Right, yeah, but there's just no way around it. Right. Now, we can also look at this I and I plan for tonight. That's really nothing on today's agenda. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sherry, you want to talk about new connection applications? Um, yes. Oh, so, one yeah. thing with that before I get on to that. I sent it, we, again, last month we put a report, we voted on the um, modifications to the ordinance. Um, Bob Galvin was going to, I sent him an email that night, he was going to send me a letter dictating what we have to do. We haven't seen that letter yet. I sent him another email last month and another, last Friday, Thursday, and another one Sunday night saying what we needed. We, we just gave us a process. What I did find out is the uh, ordinance was passed at the May 2011 town meeting. Mm -hmm. So that ordinance was voted on the, on, at the town. What I need to know is, or what we need to know is, do we make a thing at a special town meeting to do away with that and go to rules? Right? See, I don't know how we proceed here. As far as this form and how we interpret the ordinance is up to us. Correct. And right now, it, we really got the luxury of time because nothing's being connected. Correct. With this moratorium. Correct. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. So the, the purpose to creating a special form for the sewer department is so that we have some clear understanding of where a project is at any given time. We have a, a, a reference document for all the, the numbers that are associated with it, flows, fees, things of that nature. Um, I think this would be a benefit to put it forward because at some point, the EPA is going to be looking for documentation. Absolutely. Yes. This provides the documentation. And it's just going to always be on file. Um, I know there's worksheets that get used within the department. I know there's forms that are used by other departments that we kind of jump on and, and put our sewer department notes. But I feel like this would be an appropriate piece to put with the package of whatever project is in To the bring it all together. And yeah. I think we put in that ordinance where we want to see the, the form case, which we have in saying. Right. Um, and this takes the authority, the, the authority of form K is being applied to the sewer department. And the form K actually belongs to the planning board. I believe right. that this would give the sewer department their own authority. And if you look at it, it's when did we get the application? When did the applicant come in? Did we approve it? All the numbers that are associated, the fees that are paid, the INI remediation, everything, the whole ball of wax. No, I, I agree. Project. This would be this would be a nice summary form for the whole package. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, it just gets scanned in with all the other package documents. And then you have the best idea. Now. Yeah, and then you have a, a future reference if you ever need it. So what I'd like to do is start to use it, for example, with... Well, there's no reason why we can't use us. it for around 365 and 320. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like to do is, is bring that again up to Dave tonight so we can see we'd like to implement this. Um, right now, if we want to use this form, we can vote on that right now. Does the form have to have a number on it? Good point. See, if you have a number on it, they can't... A say. tracking number. Tracking number. Or any kind of number to say what the form is, the form number and tracking mm -hmm. number. Mm -hmm. That brings up a good point. Uh, Do we need like if we, if we, for example, in business, if you have a company and you have a manufacturing plant, you have 
Each asset has a tag, an asset tag, mm -hmm. an asset identification. Mm -hmm. How do we, this will consider an asset, how do we, where is form what? Does that have to be tied into the so column? So I'm tongue in cheek calling it form S. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. All right. S one, S two, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. How um, do we how do we document that form S has got to be documented probably in the ordinance? So you're going to have to document tie well, that not into necessarily. the ordinance. Necessarily, I mean it's just an internal procedure. Should be documented. Okay. If we leave, if we go out together. We all get mm -hmm. smushed. Who's going to follow that? Who's mm -hmm. going to know that form S existed? Okay. The the it should exist in documentation form somewhere. Okay. So what I would suggest then, let's use it for three twenty three sixty five, test run, iron out any of the kinks, because you know form is never done. But let's give it a try, see if there are any adjustments that we need to be made, and we can do that while we're waiting for Mr. Galvin to come back and and tell us what we need to do. Okay. Because and I don't want to hold up the bigger oh, no. No, 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 no. ordinance change to rules and regs over this. No. But what we, in the meantime, what we could do is I would plan verbiage to yep. go into I'll have it the, ready to roll when yeah. that piece is finished. Okay, let's, let's again run this by Dave tonight. Mm -hmm. Tell him what we'd like to do is vote on it, implement it tonight, uh, implement it as a trial run on 320 and 365. Mm -hmm. And then I'll create some verbiage so that when the time is right, we can just make one week when we get the information from Mr. Galvin, we could just yeah. say, okay, we're also going to add this to, to tie that in. Because yeah. okay. I'm sure those uh, ordinance changes will need to be posted as well. Okay. Do, Do we want to vote on this to check a trial run with? Um, we we'll make a motion to use this. Okay, the motion uh, I'll interpret as you made a motion to use this trial form S um, on 360 or 320 and 365 Concord Street to work the bugs out to be implemented as part of the ordinance changes down the road. Yes. Got it's that. Motion. Got that. Second. <laughs> okay, you made the motion and a second. All in favor, Mr. Yes. Ross. Yes. Ms. Valley. Yes. And Mr. Hessian's a yes. That's unanimous. Okay. Okay, I've scheduled working sessions now for the 24th. Huh? I and I account update. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I jumped. I missed that one. Put these back. That's on. That's the important okay. one. Go. Uh, we currently have fees from Monaghan Ring. We're expecting fees from Primrose and Diary Street. With the existing article monies that we have, it's a potential of 643. Okay. What are you using for I and I fees with Primrose? So Primrose, um, it was brought to my attention that the fees for Primrose should be calculated on 2021 fee schedule, not the 2022. That was agreed by Mr. Galvin at our, at our executive session. And we voted on, on June six to a point veto. And the commissioners voted on it in June. Um, I believe the current 2022 fees were quoted to Primrose. Yes. They have made a payment, um, which is in excess of what the 2021 fees would be. Total? They, total. So they paid us 81,000. Um, I think we have to refund them 18,500. I agree. Now, so everyone knows what took place. Um, gotta watch my wording on this. Primrose came before applied for a sewer connection in March, 20, March 24th of 2021. Somehow that letter got lost. Um, and that we had a meeting that night, as a matter of fact, discussing the moratorium. And what we wanted to do was all projects that had been initiated up to, up to July 1, 
we didn't want to punish with the moratorium and that we approved them. So we asked them all to come in and apply. We were very vocal about that. Those that did come in were Dwyer Street, uh, Monaghan Rink, the brewery. I believe that is it. Um, after that, so at July 1st of 2021, that moratorium went into effect. There was never any mention of Primrose. Um, Primrose had began construction. I had been noticing that. And, I'd say, and I kept saying if they brought in plans, yada yada, maybe we could accommodate them. And on October 21st of that year, 2021, 320 Concord Street delivered all the requirement, all the required plans, documents. Uh, so they were put at the head of the class, if you wish. Uh, April 8th of 2022, we found out about that letter. Uh, the, there was maybe the potential of a lawsuit. Uh, the moratorium is now in place. So uh, we, we decided to go to uh, the EPA tell them we want to make an exception to the moratorium to avoid a potential lawsuit and approve Primrose Academy, uh, which we did. Now, I also spoke with the, now, in that interim, there's been, there was no discussion of fee increases. I spoke with, I got an email from the superintendent with fees, he had quoted them. I ran it by attorney Galvin and Again, I want to make sure that I'm clear. I'm going to ask my fellow board members. I asked that question at the executive session, and I was told we had to quote them the fees that were in place when they applied. Am I correct or am I wrong? That's correct. And it's on tape, but we are correct. That's correct. All right, so those fees um, came to a grand total, I think, in the ballpark of $62,000 I used. Primrose was quoted $191,000 total. It's kind of questionable on what they were quoted because the commissioners never really got a copy of the fee matrix. No, we did not. Um, I found one in the package, in the project package. Um, I'm not even sure if this is correct. I don't know what that 150 is for. No, I don't know. So we never so, saw this. So we had voted at the June, June meeting, meeting that month. Open meeting. Open meeting to grant them the fees original fees that they were quoted. Uh, so I'm going to make a motion that we reimburse them the money based on that vote. Uh, I think that's the ethical thing to do. I think anything else would be extortion. Absolutely. So I make a motion that we, re we stick with the original fees as voted on and as recommended by Attorney Galvin and reimburse Primrose the excess. Anything paid in excess. Do I have a second on that? Second. I have a motion and a second. Mr. DeRoss, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Valley? I would vote yes. Ms. Ashton a yes, that's unanimous. And again, this was all voted on again at the June, I believe, 23rd meeting. I would also like to ask Dave if he provided anything in writing to them and then he provided an updated fee matrix so we know exactly what that fee matrix that charged. Dave is quoting has never been discussed and never voted never, on never and it's been requested multiple times and we don't get the copy okay so what we have to do now is we're going to make sure that 320 is quoted the correct fees mm -hmm. and 365 is quoted the correct fees from fees. back in yes. 2021 yes You're in agreement. I am in agreement. And those documents are what should be attached to our, our form. Right. Do we have an idea like of when the last payment was made by Primrose? Uh, I don't have the exact date. In July, they gave us a check for $81,000. Okay, no, you're reimbursing. That's from the account. But we need to know exactly you know, okay. what is the correct What's fee. That I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, no, I, I there don't is a fee structure. So you so no, everyone, Yeah, that's a, that was a no. development fee. 
Yeah, yeah, I think the, the, the fee structure, there was, there was never increases in the fee structure since 2004. In 2020, we voted a modest, after a struggle, we got an increase. We raised it again in 2021. Um, I believe it was April of this year that the superintendent came up with a letter to us um, proposing a new fee structure. We decided to table it because we were in the process of a, a moratorium anyway, and the moratorium took precedent. So that, that new fee structure was never discussed. More importantly, it was never voted on. So therefore, we cannot impose those fees on anyone until if we I, want to want to look yeah, at let's, it. Let's let's double check that because I think we're. We didn't vote on those fees, so they're not right now. The old fee structure is in place. We can't just hey, we're going to charge you this. No, I understand. It has to be a public. I it has understand. to be a documented fee structure. So again, there is a moratorium. Um, if you want to put that on the agenda for um, the September meeting, the open meeting, we can make that part of our working session to discuss that. Mm -hmm. We have all the kinks and all that worked out for presentation to the public yeah. and why we're doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'd, like to, I'd like to look into that a little bit. All right, but again, now we could do that in a working session yeah. and, and give us time to work yeah. with the people. Like I said, I don't see the urgency right now because um, 3, 365 is at the old fees anyway. Oh. Mm -hmm. 320 applied on, on October 2021. So they will quit. They haven't been approved yet. So technically their fee structure hasn't been approved, but I'm not going to change course on them at this point in the game. We're taking a final vote tonight, probably. Again, don't let me dominate this. Throw on, on 320. Oh, no, you can't. On 320. So again, has anybody seen the, the fee structure for 320? No. Have you? No. Have you? I have not either. So he will have to, Dave will have to give us the fee structure tonight. And it has to be the fees that are published. Okay. Then we, we Because they are. Because how can well, we, how can I'm we under the that there's a 2022 fee schedule? I'm not. I didn't see, have you voted on it? I, I haven't. I haven't. We talked about it. We've talked about it. We haven't voted. We just can't say, okay, there's a new fee schedule. That has to be voted on and approved and published. I understand. And we were talking I about understand. it at the time. And then we put a moratorium on it and we stuck. So it was never voted on. Never voted on. Never voted on. Well, that's what's being used. That's what I was, it can't when I be. came in as a new commissioner, that's what I was providing. The, the fee structure that's being used is the fee structure of 2021 because there has not been any fee adjustment voted on. All right. We have to find that out tonight. Yes, we do. Okay. That letter does not serve. Is it, you just can't create a fee structure out of the blue. That's going to be discussed. It's going to be voted on an open public meeting. I will say that the 2021 schedule is what's on our website. Uh, that's what's valid. Whatever's on our website is the, is the fee structure. Okay. I'm not making up the rules. No, I no, 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 no. But we need to get accurate information, and it needs to be documented and in writing. And we're not. Am I saying anything you disagree with? Please tell me. I'm, it's not what I understood. I don't know. I. All I can say, and I would have to go back and look at my documents, I was given a fee structure that said 2022. So I assume that was the correct fee schedule. Okay, maybe that's as of 22, but the so numbers I, that are in that schedule have, as far as I know, have not changed. Okay. He's been on board here. Yeah, I, I, we haven't voted. We voted on one increase. Okay. And that was in 
Yeah. Well, you, see, you, see, you yeah. see a farm down there had 150,000. Don't we know oh, that's, that that's, that's not right. No, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I think that's a cost. Yeah, no. Not a fee. Because you said they were charging one hundred ninety thousand, and add it together, that's what it'd be about one hundred ninety thousand. No, Robbie can't know. I don't have to leave for another appointment. Want to ask her for a copy of the fee schedule? She's not here. Yeah, her office is dark. Oh, huh. She probably went to lunch. This is this is what I mean. There's no communication here. There's no communication, there's no documentation. But we're making that change. So. And I wonder how they lost millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're being perpetrated as people that intrude. No, I don't mind being an intruder. Okay. So we have one now, Sherry, for I and I. I would say confirmed. Six forty-three. Just kind of forty-three thousand. Mm -hmm. Now my estimate to do the sixty-seven thousand gallons. Uh, between getting the documentation for the scope to go out to bid and the work itself is going to be around three hundred fifty thousand four hundred thousand dollars. The price that was quoted of one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars was pre COVID. One hundred forty thousand was pre COVID. That was September of twenty twenty one. Right mm -hmm. now there's, there's a there's a Oku shortage and costs are going through the roof. Now, the one thing we have got to be firm on is on that moratorium, because EPA is going to be watching that. Okay. And again, I just want to remind you of your vote. If you want to rescind it, we've got to make a motion to do it. And I'll be hard pressed to rescind it. That no new connections until that 67.5 come out. We made that promise to them, and that's in the commitment here. So I said we hold on to that. Absolutely. We can't. Yeah, no, we can't. Okay. Like I said, yeah, I don't right want up. to put words in your mouth. You're not. It's, it's in the figures right out there. Okay. We're 2.3 million gallons last, we averaged last month. Well, last month, uh, I'm going to go with uh, uh, monthly was 1.7. That brings us down to 2.9 for a 12 month rolling average. I, I got a little thing. He sent me out a piece of paper and it said 2.3 million it was last month. Was it? I thought I saw 1.7. We'll have those. Rick is going to give us that tonight yeah. anyway. Well, so with the next working session I have for next Wednesday, Sherry, you got a problem with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? I should not. I'll, I'll let you know tonight. I have an eye doctor's appointment. I don't know what day. Right. Well, what we need is a quorum. Um, Sherry, would you like to run the working sessions? Or do you want to just um, keep it as we're going? As I, no. I, I like the way it's going. Okay. Um, so, how about coming up with some agenda items for the next next working session? Oh, one thing. Let's go back onto the EPA for a minute. Let's back up track up that. Rewind. One of the things that was mentioned in the EPA that Mr. Clifford recommended, and I want to read this. Well, I didn't bring it with. Ah. Uh, Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. This is from Attorney Clifford. I am respectfully suggesting that a working group be formed to develop and implement the steps necessary to stay in compliance. I recommend that the group include Doug Lapp, Jen Constable, Dave Taylor, Attorney Kenny, the Viola representative, and a member of the Sewer Commission and a member of the Board of Selectmen. We have pending deadlines September 1st and again on November 1st. Now again, I want to also throw in that the EPA has also notified us in July that the town is going to be fined. Nothing to do with any deadlines. We're going to be fined for violations in the past. So with that working committee, I would like to go on record saying is we have had that working commission committee all along since April. Um, 
That is the three civil commissioners, Dave Taylor, while he is the interim superintendent. And what I would like to do is extend an invitation to Lori Childs, who is the board of selectman liaison office to this, to join us. Now, any meetings we're gonna have on this matter is open session of public meeting. Like Mr. Regan is here, anyone is welcome to attend those. Mm -hmm. There'll be no public comment or input to those minutes. Mm -hmm. They can save their input for our regular monthly meeting. Now, I have said my spiel. How do you feel about it, Mr. DeRoss? I think you're 100% right on the money. We're doing everything above board, nothing not illegal. What, what else do they want? Do, are they going to have a monthly meeting with all these people coming here? I don't see any. All they want to do is make sure that we're notifying them of what we're doing. And I think our open meeting, I don't think there's another board being more open than what they're doing or more proactive, to be honest, and I don't care what Mr. Clifford says. I think our working, our commission is working fine. Um, they wanted the department head, being Mr. Mr. Taylor, to be responsible to for the due dates. He's responsible, and all we do is say, here's your due date, what are you doing about it? Um, but by charter and by state law, the sewer department is the responsibility of the sewer commissioners. That order was given to the town, yes. Uh, the town charter designates the sewer commission to make that sure that that order is met. And we can form the committee and we have that committee. Or do you have any difference of opinion? No, uh, no. I think that's quite a large group that he outlined. I'm not sure how productive that large group would be with the sewer commissioners understanding what's happening in the department. Um, I think it's, they are ultimately accountable to the EPA. The EPA is, is dealing with the town, but the sewer commission are, are the people that are responsible. So I think by inviting Laura Childs, um, she can express any concerns, questions that they might have. And they meet twice a month. Mm -hmm. So and, and again, the EPA is on our agenda for every working session. And it gets on our agenda for every monthly meeting. It's on every monthly meeting for so the next two years. So they have questions, and it's are all open meetings. So if anyone wants to attend, they're more than welcome. If they want to ask questions, they got to be recognized, and we'll answer them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a motion that that working commission, or whatever they how they want to word it, a working group is in prog in place, consisting of the three commissioners and Mr. Taylor. And we will invite Ms. Laurie Childs, Selectman Laurie Childs, to represent the Board of Selectmen. Excuse me, one thing I'm going to throw out there that, I haven't, that we haven't discussed. One thing I have been playing with and th thinking about, do you want to involve someone from the public, a resident? They may not have input, but they may see it as a different perspective than we see it when we're so close to it, from the residential side. That resident could be an observer. I was thinking someone on the line like Mr. Egan, but I don't think he's interested with all those outside activities. That person cannot be a controversial person in Rockland. So I'm throwing that out there for discussion. Yeah. Now again, that does not have to be solved or, or voted on now. As we, this order is going to be in place for the next five years. Mm -hmm. But before I involve all town hall, I'd rather involve a resident. Town hall's getting upkeeps, I'm sure, for Mr. Taylor. Mm -hmm. Michael Laughlin has told me he watches every single meet sewer commission meeting, so he's getting updates on that. And there's nothing we're discussion, discussing after the fact. Or can I mean everything's out in the open? What we need to do, and one. So I'll tell you what. Let's table that food for thought. Maybe have a former selectman. Well, well, what I might suggest: we have a working meeting. We meet every week. We have a monthly meeting, open to the public for questions. Um, again, I would invite the public if they do have questions to submit them. They can be invited to one of our working sessions. 
but I don't want to disrupt the working session fielding questions. Mm -hmm. Correct. This field, this working session is for the three of us to get through and clean up some items before we present them at the monthly meeting. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the thing on the I and I, we don't need to beat that all night long. Right. But if these working sessions, if you're not part of that board, there's going to be no input. They mm -hmm. can submit questions, mm -hmm. or they can participate at the monthly meeting. And participate at the monthly meeting. I think, yeah, I think right now we just need to focus on meeting some deadlines. Okay. Um, so I would like to, yeah. Let's have a, a let's what do we want for our it. next work, working session Be agenda? Before we move on to, well, okay, I found the sewer connection for use. And it's very tiny. It's that first full sentence down there. I can't even speak. Yeah. Which says $20. Yes, that was up. We updated that twenty dollars per gallon. Okay. That's the only thing we've updated. Um, Which. But. That's this. But, I want and you to look when that. I want you to look when that into effect. Yeah, July twenty twenty one. Okay, they should be quoted ten dollars a gallon. Because they were previous to this. Correct. I'm just okay. That's fine. Now I understand. That we wanted the more so you know you weren't as part of that. No, I want right. to explain it to you so you know. We decided we we're going to go up to the fee structure, but we I did we did not want to do that till we had the moratorium in place, mm -hmm. because I felt that was we're only going to be repeating that and possibly punishing other people. So we wanted everything in place at the same time: the new fee structure and the moratorium. Okay. Got it. You were there. I can blame you. Got it. For me, I get all kinds. Okay, so <laughs> that so, is the fee schedule. So this fee schedule does not apply to the ones that were approved prior to the moratorium. No, it does not. Okay. That means everything that was on that list, including primrose, negotiable, is the fees for three twenty, which I think should. Oh, three twenty has to go. Yes, three twenty right. has to go in that because three twenty applied in October twenty twenty one. Three twenty is subject to the new fees. Right. Okay, how about some agenda items for the working session? EPA. Mm -hmm. um, Project manager. Due date. I will send out uh, um, um, some minutes of my phone call with them this afternoon. Okay. So you have them by tomorrow. Okay, so I have the project, project manager. manager. Um, bid proposals. Yeah, bid proposal for. Um, How many bids did you get? We haven't got any yet. Well, bid proposal the, for. Um, what we want to talk about. Uh, I, I and I work. Yeah, well, those are those guys in the black the black trucks go around. I mean, before we before we do that, the, the bid proposal is for the pipeline specs. And drawings and bid package. We want a five sealed bids. It opened up here. To the commission opened up here. Mm. All bids, even in this this um, when this goes out to bid, he's got they will open the bids. Those bids will come to the the board or Doug Lapp as the chief procurement officer. But they will be opened at an open public meeting at the board. The other thing we're going to have to talk about in item four is um, interviews. So try to let me know tonight your availability mm -hmm. all that week and uh, for those two weeks. Give them to Stacy and see when she could. I'll let you know tonight. Yep, if you could. And then doctor's appointment tomorrow. My um, best friends are doctors now. This Weston <laughs> Samson I mean, control plan, are we talking about that tonight? Yeah, we'll talk about that tonight because I okay, don't understand it. Because I have questions. Okay. I got, I got, the one thing I'll tell you, if you look at the control that's paying for 10 grand all inclusive, I find that hard to believe. But that's a heck of a price. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll talk about that tonight. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn the meeting. I make the motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor, Mr. DeRoss? Yes. Mr. Hessian is a yes. Ms. Valley? Yes. Unanimous.